Hi, Lan. Hi, Martin. You built a solution that uses generative AI? Yes, I use serverless, and it wasn't that hard. I'm happy to show you. What does your generative AI solution do, Lan? Imagine you run a website that lets users book flights and hotels. You want to create video ads for multiple destinations and for multiple traveler types. So if there are 50 destinations and 10 traveler types, that would require 500 video files. Uh, that would take forever to create manually. That's right. That's why my team is building a solution called Generative AI for Travel Advertisers to automate the process. Generative AI knows the top destinations in Singapore, for example. It can generate the ad text for those sites. Then the solution can download an image of those sites. Finally, combining the text and the image, we can create a video ad for these destinations. Very nice. Uh, did you have to study AI to make this work? Uh, I know I'm not an expert in AI and I wouldn't know where to start. I'm not an AI expert either. But it was fairly easy to build this solution because it just calls the Google Cloud Vertex Palm API. It simply sends a question to the AI and the AI responds. Also, the solution runs on Google Cloud functions, so I don't have to do the configuration for the servers. I just upload the source code and Google Cloud take care of the rest. Great. What does it look like when it runs? All right, here's the home page. I'll click Start. I'll pick Singapore as the destination and relaxation lovers and nature goers as the travel audience. Then I'll click the next button to generate the destinations. And now the tool is asking Google's generative AI to find the Singapore destinations. Yes, the solution is asking AI for the top places for relaxation lovers and nature goers in Singapore. Looks like it's done. Now we got three relaxing places and three nature places. Let's generate the video as for them. And is the AI doing any work now? No, the AI is done. Now the solution did run some code to generate the video files. And it's done. I'll click next and then we get to see the generated video ads. Wow, that was much quicker than I would have been able to pick all those places and create those video ads manually. Uh, but I'm a developer. Yes, Martin. So I'd like to see how you built this. Can I? Sure, let's take a look. First, I needed a question I could ask the AI. I also needed values for some parameters that the AI asked for. So I went to Vertex AI and picked Generative AI Studio language. I click here to generate a new prompt. Uh, that looks pretty open-ended. Uh, you just type there in that box? Yeah, so I use this page to try out different prompts. After some trial and errors, I arrive at this format. Provide three places to visit in Singapore if I like relaxations in the format of play slogan. Each description is less than eight words. As you can see here, that gives a pretty good result. Tell me about all the sliders and the other controls there to the right. So I can change the generative AI model with this dropdown. I use the default one. Temperature controls how random the AI response will be. A low temperature is good for prompts that expect a true or correct response. A high temperature can lead to a more diverse result. So I found that a temperature of 0.1 worked best for my question. For auto parameters, I used the default values. Okay, so you got a prompt and parameters that work well. Uh, what was your next step? So I clicked view code up there. From there, I was able to choose Python, Python Colab, or Curve. Colab is a Jupyter Notebook service hosted by Google. I like to use it for experimenting and tweaking my code before I deploy them. Very nice. So Generative AI Studio gave you the AI code for your application and you tweaked it until you were happy with it. And then you added some supporting code around it?
Yes, let's have a look. Here is the cloud function that generates the places. I will click the source type so we can see the code. The entry point is the get recommended places Python function. The function started with some course related stuff. Ah, uh, that code handles the case when the web page and the cloud function are served from different domain names, right? That's right. The interesting code started here. So I loop over every audience and every place. For every audience and place combination, I call the make prompt function. And that function generates the prompt or question that you will send to the AI? Exactly. It's a simple function. It returns the prompt that I came up with in the Generative AI Studio. And how do you send that prompt, that string, to the AI? So I will go back to the Get Recommended Places. The prompt that I got from the Make Prompt is stored in the prompt variable. Then I send the variable to the Provide Reasons function. That function is quite short. Yes, it only does three things. One, it creates a text generation model. That class is provided by Google and I import it at the top of the code. Two, it calls the predict method on the model. And three, it returns the response text. And what would a typical response text look like? So here is an example. When I asked the AI for the nature places in Singapore, it responded with these places. So I want to separate the name of each place and the description. And I do that in the parse text function. That displays Python string manipulation. And finally, the function returns all of the audiences and places to the caller. And then another piece of code generates videos based on those places? Yes. That happens in the generate videos cloud function. It turns out that generating video files takes more code than calling the AI itself. Oh, does it? Uh, but no AI is used for generating those video files? That's right. The only AI used here is in the provide reasons function. Well, I'm no AI expert, but I think I'd be able to write my own generative AI application based on what you just showed me, Lan. Yeah, it's a fairly simple process. We start by trying out different prompts and parameters in a generative AI studio. When you're happy with them, pick Python Colab to experiment with the code or Python to get the auto-generated Python code. Yeah, and the code was pretty straightforward, right? That's right. All you have to do is import text generation model. Create a model instance by calling the from pre-trained method and then call the predict method on the model instance. Yeah, I feel inspired to write my own generative AI app. Thanks for showing us how to do this, Lan. Thanks for having me, Martin. And thank you, everyone, for watching. If you have any questions for Lan or me, please let us know in the comments. Also, do let me know if there are any other serverless topics you'd like to see in future episodes. I read every single comment. Until next time.